Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 28 of the chapter Thermodynamics. In part 27, I told you about spontaneity and I told you about entropy and how enthalpy and entropy both are the deciding factors in whether a reaction would be spontaneous or non-spontaneous. But to sum all of this together and to bring all of it together is a new concept that was introduced which was known as the Gibbs or free energy. And the Gibbs energy and its relationship to spontaneity is the topic of this video. Gibbs energy was a function that was given in an equation which said that Gibbs energy is equal to enthalpy minus the temperature and entropy of the system. And it is represented by G and it is known as the Gibbs function or it, the Gibbs free energy. It is an extensive property which means that it does not, it only depends on the state, it does not depend on the path of the reaction. So it is a state function. Then if you take the change in Gibbs energy, it would be represented as delta G. So the change in Gibbs free energy of the system would then be equal to the enthalpy of the system minus the T s of the system so what can change the temperature can change and the entropy can also change so in one set here we've taken the entropy to be changing and in this portion here we take the temperature to be changing so we say delta g system would be equal to delta h system minus t as it is and delta s where the entropy is changing minus s that is entropy is constant and temperature is changing of the system. But if temperature is constant, if the change is taking place at constant temperature, then delta T becomes equal to zero and it no longer remains significant. Therefore, this portion of the equation is removed. So at constant temperatures, we find that delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, where all the deltas are for the system. That is, the free energy of the system or Gibbs free energy for the system is equal to the enthalpy change of the system minus T into entropy change of the system. This equation is one of the most important equations in chemistry and it is known as the Gibbs equation and it will be used most extensively in your study of thermodynamics. If you take the units, that is dimensionally, if you study delta G, we call it Gibbs free energy and we call it an energy and it has the units of energy and let us see why it has the units of energy. Delta H, that is enthalpy is in joules, right? It has the units of energy. Temperature is Kelvin and delta S, that is change in entropy. What is entropy? It is Q of the system divided by T, that is the temperature of the system. That is how we describe delta S. Delta S is Q reversible upon T. So Q has, what is the unit of Q? It is heat Q upon, that is delta H upon T. Therefore, delta S would be T, delta S would be K for t temperature into joules, that is joules of energy Q upon T is again Kelvin. Therefore, the Kelvin and Kelvin get cancelled out and you're left with joules. So both of these have the units of, the, the unit for both of these is joules, therefore delta G, the unit for delta G is also joule. And that's the reason why we call it the Gibbs free energy. We call it energy, the free energy, we'll talk of it later. Now in the previous video, we understood that for a spontaneous process, the total entropy, the entropy, the total entropy for a system, it should be positive. The entropy change for a system or and the surroundings that is delta S total should be positive for a reaction to be spontaneous. So delta S total is actually the sum of delta S of the system plus the delta S of the surrounding that is change in entropy of the system and change in entropy of the surrounding. The sum of it would be known as delta S total. So if the system is in thermal equilibrium with the surroundings. In other words, when delta T is zero 
when the temperature is not changing, what do you mean by thermal equilibrium? It means whatever temperature the system is in, uh, the temperature of the surroundings is the same. And if it, that is when we say the two are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So if they both have the same temperature, as we said here, that at constant temperature, this is the equation that is applicable. Therefore, if they are in thermal equilibrium with each other, then delta H of the system, that is the change in enthalpy of the system, would be equal to the negative of that change for the surrounding. For example, if let us say that um, 20 joules of energy is given out by the system, right? Then if both of them are at the same temperature and they are in thermal equilibrium, then whatever is delta H, whatever is being given out by the system should be equal to the amount of energy which is being absorbed by the surrounding. Therefore, it would be equal to minus delta H of the surrounding. If 20 joules of energy was given out by the system, then 20 joules, exactly 20 joules of energy was absorbed by the surrounding. None of it was wasted in anything. All of it was being transferred. There was a direct transfer of enthalpy from, uh, that is heat, from the system to the surrounding or from the surrounding to the system with no loss of energy. So whatever energy was being given was equal on both sides. So if a system is in thermal equilibrium with the surroundings, then delta H surroundings are equal, sorry, system is equal to the negative of delta H of surroundings. Therefore, we can say that how would you calculate the delta S? Delta S of system can be calculated. Delta S of the surrounding can therefore be written in terms of enthalpy of the system. So, because delta S, it is enthalpy. What is delta S surrounding? It would be enthalpy of the surrounding divided by the temperature of the surrounding. The temperature on both sides is the same and therefore it will be the enthalpy of surrounding. But enthalpy of surrounding can be written in terms of enthalpy of the system because whenever we study, we do not study the surroundings. We always study the changes that are taking place in the system. So if delta H is whatever value, 20 joules for the system, then for the surrounding, it should be minus 20 joules. So we can write that in terms of the enthalpy of the system. We know that delta S surrounding is delta H surrounding divided by T. But delta H surrounding is equal to minus of delta H system. It would be minus of or delta H system and delta H surrounding are opposite signs. So if delta H surrounding is positive, then this would be the negative of delta H of system upon T. So we also know that delta S total is equal to delta S system plus delta S surrounding. And what is delta S surrounding? According to what we have calculated now, delta S surrounding is equal to minus delta H system upon T. Right? If you rearrange this equation, multiply all of it by T. Multiply all the terms by T on both the sides. So what do you get? You'll get T delta S total, multiply left hand side and right hand side by T. You'll get T delta S and delta S is total would be equal to T, multiply this by T, it will be T delta S system minus, if you multiply this by T, the T and T get cancelled, so you're left with minus delta H system. All you have done is rearranged it. Now, on further rearranging it, let us see what happens. We know for a spontaneous process, delta S total, if the process is spontaneous, then for a spontaneous process, delta S total should always be positive. All reactions or all changes should lead to an increase of entropy. And the entropy of the universe is always increasing. That is the second law of thermodynamics. So the entropy of the system, or the, that is the total entropy, should always increase. Therefore, it should always have a positive value. This we know. So now T delta S minus delta H system should be greater than zero. Why? Because T delta S total, T delta S total is greater than zero. Therefore, T delta S minus delta H system should also be equal to zero. Or if we now rearrange this again, you bring the negative outside and put this I'm doing so that I can relate it to this equation. This step we are doing only so we can relate it to delta G. 
If you rearrange this, bring the negative sign outside, bring delta H here and bring T delta S on that side. So you get negative outside, so you get delta H system here, minus will come here, so minus T delta S system, because minus and minus is plus. It means nothing, we are only rearranging it. So this amount should also be greater than zero. And what this amount? Negative of this amount should be greater than zero. So positive of this amount should be less than zero. And what is this amount delta H minus T delta S? Delta H minus T delta S is delta G. So we are studying a spontaneous process. Therefore for a spontaneous process, the negative of free energy should be greater than zero. Or the free energy, the Gibbs free energy delta G should be less than zero. De minus delta G is greater than zero for a spontaneous process, therefore delta G, which is equal to delta H minus T delta S, should be less than zero for a spontaneous process, right? So T delta S system is the, we say uh, delta G is the free energy. Free energy which is available for doing work. So what is free energy? It is the enthalpy of the system, the total enthalpy of the system minus T delta S. It means this is the energy which is available to do work which is equal to this but some amount of this which is T delta S is not available to do work. So what do you call T delta S? T delta S system is actually that amount of energy which cannot be used for doing work. So all the energy change that takes place in a chemical reaction, all of it cannot be used to do work. Some of it cannot be used or is not available for doing work. That energy which is not available for doing work is equal to T delta S. And free energy is actually the amount of energy, it's only a part of enthalpy which is capable of doing work. And that is why we call it the Gibbs free energy, the energy which is free to do work. And the energy which is not free to do work is T delta S. Right? Therefore, delta G is the energy which is available to do work. So we can summarize this as that at constant pressure and temperature, you saw we have assumed that temperature is constant and pressure is atmospheric pressure, let us assume. So at constant pressure and temperature, delta G, if it is negative, then the process is spontaneous. And if delta G is positive, then the process is non-spontaneous.